Nan fit for heroes? Nan fit for bloody heroes? That's a joke, isn't it, eh? What a joke. Yo, we go over there. We do all we can for us. All we can for this country. We're promised you will come back as heroes. We will look after you. Heroes. There's nothing. Four years we've been back and there's nothing. Nothing. No jobs. No hope. Nothing. You'd think, wouldn't you, eh? All of us that, that lay down over there. You plenty of room over here. Plenty of jobs going to spare. And then, of course, of course, the, the flu comes along. That takes out... That takes out more than you can imagine. It takes out my eyes. My dear, sweet Alice. Never get to see her. By the time I'm home, it's cold in the ground. The house is cold. It's not a home. It's the house. Empty. Soulless. Just like the rest of the country. This country's disgrace. I tell you. You walk down. Any main street, in any town, you will see somewhere on that street, sat on the, the pavement or in a, a shop alcove maybe, some poor bugger. He might have a placard round his neck or a little, little cup in front of him. He might just be Asking for a job, or a penny or two, anything, just to get him by a bit. You look at that fella. He's got his medals pinned to his chest. He's done his bit. He's done his bit for his country. You look, he might, he might be missing an arm or a leg. Or maybe, maybe half his face ain't there. And this is how the country looks after him. It's a disgrace. Well, I'll tell you something. You could be walking down this street I'm telling you about. And you'll see this fella, just like I said. And you'll remember it. Oh yeah, there he is. <laughs> Just like he said it'd be. Hang on a minute. Two arms. Two legs. His face looks all right. Get yourself a job, you lazy blighter. Go on. Get on your bike. You look in those eyes. You look in that man's eyes. And he's lost more than a limb. He's lost hope. Hope. That's what this country's given him. It's a disgrace. It's what we've got. Nothing. It's the boredom. It's the boredom that kills you. Each morning, each day, it's the same. You get up, you come downstairs, you her kettle on. If it's a good day, you've got a bit of toast to make. Then you get out. 
You get out and you walk the streets, you knock on doors, you've got a job, any job, bit of gardening, put a shelf up, I can do it all. Nothing. Go to the factories, you queue up with all the others, amongst all the others, hoping that today's your lucky day. And every now and again, every now and again it is. Somebody wants a job doing, yeah. You're one of the lucky ones that gets the day in the factory. But day after day, you're bored. Now, I'll tell you something. We were bored in the trenches, God. We were bored out of our minds all the time. I mean, it wasn't all fun and games shooting Germans, you know. I reckon six, seven times I fired my rifle in anger at Germans, or, well, the enemy, any hands. Uh, I was at Harris, I was at Luce, I was at Somme, of course, all at the Somme, Passchendaele, a couple of the other places. But in all those years, six, seven times, the rest of the time, Bloody boring. <laughs> God. I mean, just before dawn, stand two. You're up on the fire step. Got your rifle. There you go. You're looking over no man's land, waiting for the Germans to advance. Please, God, make it be today. Give us something to do. But it ain't. So you step down. Have some breakfast. Darn your socks. Write letters home. If you're lucky... Sergeant Major's coming along, he's going to do a bit of a foot inspection. That's always a treat for you. <laughs> Most of the time you're just bored. But you know something? In the trenches, you know. You're bored with your blokes, with your mates. So, you have a laugh, you have a song. You take the mickey out of each other. You get each other through. You know something also, I mean... We're bored, but we know. We know there's a reason why we're bored. We know there's a purpose. And we just put up with that. We've just got to get by. And we dance together. But now, what's the purpose of this? You're not with your mates. I mean, when you're at the factories, queuing up with all the lads, I mean, there's hundreds sometimes that you're with. But you don't want them to get the job. You want you to get the job. It's desperate. And you're hungry. Oh, my God, I mean, the hunger. Day after day, I mean, it's like you're... It's like your stomach's eating itself. You wake up hungry, you go to bed hungry, you live all day hungry. We were never hungry in the trenches, I can tell you. Do you know what? I put on about a stone in weight in the trenches, how about that, eh? I was two stone heavier coming out than I am now. I mean, they fed you pretty good. I mean, uh, there was always plenty of marmalade, Breakfast was something else, you know, a bit of that. Uh, well, always a bit of that. Uh, bread and jam and, and butter, a bit of bacon on the go and tea. I'll tell you what, the best meal, the best meal you could ever imagine. Cold January night, right? It's cold all day long. You've been, you've been there freezing, you're not, freezing. <laughs> all, all, all day in the, you don't think you get any colder, but you're all together and you're all trying to jolly each other up. And then the word comes round, stew's on the way. That's the food, not the bloke. <laughs> and you can see it. You can see it coming through the trench system. The big vats with a steam going up into the air, miles and miles. Gradually, 
gets closer and closer. The steam gets lower and lower. And then he's coming down your system. And you've got your bowl out. And he ladles out the conicus stew. Oh. And he ladles it out. And you've got your spoon. You just get a little bit to your lips. It's bloody frozen. <laughs> so you get your hand in your pocket and you get some pepper out. And you chuck that pepper on that stew. And you taste it again. And all of a sudden, your insides are burning with the heat. On a cold January night, that is the best meal I've ever had. And now, it's nothing. I mean, don't get me wrong on that then. I mean, I'm, I don't want to go back to the trenches. I mean, it might have been different. I'm not mad or nothing. You know, the lice and the rats, the death. But you'd just think, wouldn't you? After all that, that we'd have a little bit more here. Yeah to come back to not boredom and hunger it is a disgrace this country is a disgrace this country looks after no one least of all no one who's got nothing that's for sure and you know what I'm alright I will be all right. Not like this poor sod over here. Because I've got, I've got two legs. I've got two arms. And half my brain's still there anyhow. I'll get by. I'll make it. But I'll do it. Because I'm me. And I'll do it for me. This country don't give a damn about me. So I'll have to do it on my own. I'll tell you. I will. <laughs>